Well, Phase 4 of Season of Discovery will be arriving on July 11th, and we will finally be getting into the endgame of Vanilla World of Warcraft once again, this time with a seasonal twist. There have been tons of updates from your classes, raids, to dungeons and itemization, so there'll be plenty to discover in this phase. I'm going to be covering all the new features and announcements that have been posted online since the news dropped the other day, and get you up to date with everything that you'll want to know about Phase 4, as well as perhaps anything that you might have missed. So with that said, let's make a start. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, Omni Heroes. Omni Heroes is a heroic fantasy world and a casual strategy RPG highly recommended by both Google Play and the App Store. As an Omni Guardian, you embark on a mission to rescue captive Valkyries from demonic forces and stand against the armies of evil. In this world, you summon legendary heroes, discover unique synergies, and craft ultimate team compositions. New to Omni Heroes is the latest event. Embark on an Eastern adventure starting June. 28th. Featuring an exhilarating new storyline infused with the Eastern power, fresh relics to explore, roguelike dungeon gameplay, and an updated GVG mode, there will be tons to do and see. During this, you will follow along the journey of an amnesiac deity, Wukong, who has fallen to the mortal realm, where he seeks to reclaim his divinity. You will also join forces with the martial arts queen Mulan and the panda deity, as well as having the ability to directly play as those characters within the game. This quest will delve deep into the divine realm where you must overcome a formidable abyssal force and eventually reclaim wukong's true nature there's all this and loads more waiting for you so download on the heroes through my link in the video description or scan my qr code today and join the mysterious eastern adventure of season four new players can claim 999 times three free pulls and returning players will get extra rewards from the special event glorious return many thanks to omni heroes for the sponsor today Day, let's get back to WoW. We'll begin with dungeons, so all the remaining dungeon content will be made available, from the second half of Blackrock Depths to Skolomance, Strat, and so on. Basically, if it wasn't in Phase 3 or if it was just too high level, you'll be able to enter it now. We also had a new mystery dungeon that was teased, and from the announcement video that Blizzard put together, this appears to be in the demon area of Ashenvale in the southeast. This was where Warlocks did their Metamorphosis quest and Paladins divined storm. And this is a pretty lore-heavy place within the game. This is where Gromash Hellscream killed Manoroth. And during the video, you can see the spirit of a rather angry-looking orc in front of his monument. So I think we have a pretty good idea what this is going to be, so I hope it's good. The Tier 0 questline will also be in the game from the launch of Phase 4. This is the super long quest chain that upgrades your dungeon blue set to their better version. And these sets have also received updated itemization as well as set bonuses and each new respective spec or class identity has also received a tier set tailored to them as well. So there'll be one for Tank Shaman, one for Mage Healer, one for Melee Hunter, and so on. Blizzard also did say there would be a way to obtain your class's other tier sets through gold or other means after you've completed the quest. So this is kind of a big deal for everyone, and before the raids are out, more on that in a moment, pretty much everyone will be going for these. There's going to be a lot of people running X Dungeon with Y piece of armor reserved, but I guess that's always been the case. At the end of the day, you'll want to run dungeons with five different classes and just roll on the tier piece you need. Also, you're never doing UBRS or Diamol or anywhere that has part of this quest chain in without somebody having the quest anymore. It's definitely a difficult quest to do and it costs a bunch of gold and a lot of time, but it does end up rewarding eight pieces of armor and being able to pick up eight pieces for your other specs does skip out a lot of content we'll have to see what the cost ends up being of getting the other armor sets once you've completed the quest but hopefully this works out we also have a new currency the tarnished undermine real this new currency can be earned from most non-rare dungeon bosses over level 55 once per day to purchase a variety of materials items and more this is kind of the evolution of what wild offering were in phase three and it's basically just emblems of heroism in the game but for me it's a good update still it gives people more reason to run dungeons and anything which achieves that is a positive pretty much and we don't know what you can buy yet either but we'll find out soon enough 
All in all with dungeons, I'm hopeful the content will remain relevant for a bit longer than it typically does in vanilla. Next we have raids. So first up, the raid boss releases will be delayed. So of course the patch in phase 4 itself drops on July 11th and the new instanced, I guess quote unquote, world bosses in Kaza Kanasiagos will be released at 1pm PDT or 10pm CST on July 18th. These bosses will be tuned for 20 players but you can bring up to 40. Then afterwards, Molten Core and Anixia will open on July 25th, again at 1pm PDT or 10pm CEST, and that's globally of course. And Molten Core will also be a 20 player raid as we already knew. The idea here is to give there some time for the Prebis phase to take place and your ability to get your attunements done. This is kind of the standard across World of Warcraft as a whole now to delay raids a little bit. They do it in retail, they did it at the start of Wrath, they did it at the the start of Kata, this just seems to be the thing they do. Molten Core will also have a new boss that we will have to discover. The big raid announcement is the new bi-weekly lockout system. Blizzard say players in North America and Europe will have their resets on Tuesdays and Saturdays. This is kind of similar to what the old 3-day raid lockouts used to be, but it's bi-weekly now instead, as 3-day lockouts would inevitably land raids resetting on different days from week to week. This is just to keep it consistent. So EU is going to have their reset day on Tuesday now, that is going to be strange to deal with. There has been an update to this too. Now initially Blizzard had planned for this to be all raiding content in Phase 4, from the one boss raids all the way to Molten Core, but they've already had an update on this saying Molten Core will utilize the standard seven day lockout period based upon your feedback. I think initially they wanted to give players more ways to get loot and more chances to be able to raid on alts, especially seeing how popular BFD was back at the start of phase one, and that of course had a three day lockout. I also think they got a bunch of feedback during Sunken Temple in phase three of people saying we don't have enough to do outside of the raid, but in phase four there's already a pretty good amount of content. You've got the one boss raids in Asia Gold. Kazakh and Anixia, they are still going to be on a bi-weekly lockout, and Molten Core, which will take place once a week as the standard. I'm glad that Blizzard responded to this fast and made this adjustment, because if there's one thing I know about WoW players, it's they'll often do things in a way which aren't terribly enjoyable for them, just if it means they'll reach their goal faster. And I reckon two Molten Cores a week would have ended up burning people out. Plus, can you imagine what would happen when we got the other vanilla raids added? You already go back to Molten and call for bindings to BWL for trinkets and tier and so on. So I think that's been resolved and it'll be fine, but where the conversation is definitely still ongoing in the community at the moment is world buffs. So world buffs have been a big part of Season of Discovery so far, with each new raid having a new world buff, and in the final phase we're going to have access to all the world buffs. You're going to have your Rallying Cry of the Dragon Slayer, your Diamond buff, Songflower, Darkmoon Fair, Warchief's Blessing, and the Alliance version more on that in a moment, and later the Zulgarub buff as well. And this topic really divides opinions, whether they should be in the game, should there be no world buffs, or should there be some kind of compromise here. It's looking as though they will stay though, in fact Blizzard are helping the situation somewhat by lowering the cooldown of the Chronoboon Displacer from 1 hour down to 5 minutes. This will alleviate having to wait between unbooning and rebooning a new set of buffs. This might end up seeing pretty excessive use though, and people will start to reboon for everything that's a little bit risky, but this should still be a positive change. And unfortunately just saying don't get world buffs if you don't want to go through the effort of getting them isn't really how the video game works. You could have just not raided Molten Core twice per week under the old bi-weekly lockout system, but Blizzard changed it because they realised it could cause issues. At the end of the day, a huge part of the whole MMORPG genre is increasing the power level of your character, and a single world buff can be equal to half a dozen pieces of Biss gear, if not more in some cases. The amount of power you get from them is unparalleled. In other versions of WoW you come to raid with gems, enchants and consumables, in Classic you come to raid with enchants, consumes and 
world buffs. Have you ever heard this? Given the opportunity, players will optimize the fun out of a game, and therefore, one of the responsibilities of designers is to protect the player from themselves. Blizzard have done this. They changed the raid lockout of Molten Core back to one week. They did this by removing ranking decay and setting static honor caps in PvP. They even did this by putting the Chrono Boon in the game to prevent griefing and dispels. I think a part of this reluctance to change their stance on world buffs is coming from Season of Mastery. This was World of Warcraft's first seasonal server, and they removed all world buffs from the raiding content, and it didn't end up being too popular overall. But I doubt those two things happening were overly heavily correlated, and the server had other issues, timing of release being a big one. The thing is, in regular classic, your class is, well, it's pretty basic to play when it comes to raiding, so world buffs do spice things up a bit. In Season of Discovery, we have way more going on for our classes, and we are putting out much higher damage, and you get your standard group or raid wide buffs too. For me the compromise, were there ever to be one, will be to allow the easy to get world buffs such as Dragon Slayer, War Chief's Blessing and ZG to be enabled, and for Songflower, Diamall and Darkmoon Fair to go. Also Blizz, if you want to buff War Chief's Blessing so it's not completely cosmetic for casters, that would be great. I mean every world buff you put in the game so far has heavily benefited casters more than melee for a reason. The same kind of goes for ZG actually, casters don't get much out of it. But anyways, that is enough on world buffs. Next up, I just want to do a quick mention to runes, and this isn't about new runes in the phase per se, it's more about gathering runes from previous phases, still feels as though it could be made better. Some old runes need more than one player to get, or they're gained in the same way across multiple characters. Are there any plans for this to change, because it's a season where alts have been heavily encouraged, but then when you want to make one, you have to go around gathering all these runes before you can start playing. And I'm myself a big alt character enjoyer. I have done this. I know what it's like to get the same runes on multiple characters. Sure, I don't mind doing the quests or rune stories that are unique to a class, but I really don't want people to have to suffer doing Dark Riders more than they have to, just because I had to. We haven't had anything announced on this yet, but I think it would improve playing alts in general, and would make more people want to try alts. When you think about it, removing repeated grinds across multiple characters has been a thing since 2007 with attunements in TBC, so I think it would make sense here as well. As for your classes, there's of course a new back rune and runes for your ring as well, and tons of class updates across the board. Every single class in the game has had a bunch of changes, updated playstyles, rune balancing and so on. There really is so many changes that there's more than I could possibly go over in a video, it would just go on and on. But the PTR is currently active and you can check out what's going on on there, but when phase 4 drops and you log into your class, you're gonna have a bit of relearning to do. As expected, there's now a counterpart for War Chief's Blessing for the Alliance called the Might of Stormwind, and also these two buffs won't stack. We don't know how it's got yet, but it gives the exact same stats for the same duration. As with prior phases, we have tons of updated profession items as well, and confirmation of blacksmiths and leather workers will be able to change their specialization via a small gold fee. For PvP, you'll be able to rank up to 10 and we'll have the associated pvp rewards with that bracket we'll have alteric valley of course the reputation and all the rewards from that and the stv event will still be there but it's been changed to be more for honor farming rather than gearing up there's a new world event of course the black rock eruption around black rock mountain during this new quest will spawn in and there'll be new mobs in these zones outside the mountain where you can farm reputation gold and so on and inside the mountain you'll earn bone Asana. So this is a real throwback to Black Rock Mountain PvP and should be a lot of fun with all the different levels to Black Rock Mountain. Those are all the major points for Phase 4 though, which is again releasing pretty soon on July 11th, so you've got some time to gear up and get stuck into the end game. And whatever happens with the next phase, the previous period of time in World of Warcraft is basically always good in any version of the game, so it should be a lot of fun. And I can't wait to see how all these various class changes pan out too. But that's about everything I've got for today so let me know your thoughts on the patch in the comments down below and as always thank you all so much for watching and listening in and I'll see you all in the next one very soon.